Your lesson essential question is how do I identify cause effect structure in a historical text? So we're looking at cause and effect today as a text structure and we're looking at historical texts. Last week we talked about sequence as a text structure and we talked about the order of events. Today we're going to be going into cause and effect. So something happens because of something else and that triggers other things to happen and builds the entire text. A historical text is a text that tells us about something from the past. So you might have a historical text that talks about a person from history or an event from history. So the cause occurs first and it leads to an event. The event then results in consequences or effects. So first we'll have a cause and that triggers other things to happen leading to the effect of the cause. So if you came home from the bus stop and you were soaking wet, that was the effect of it raining on your walk home from the bus stop, right? So things happen because of other things. And then a lot of times your effect becomes a cause for something else. So maybe it was raining and that caused you to be all wet when you got home. Well, then you had to change your clothes. So the effect of being all wet is that you had to change your clothes. So being wet becomes your cause. So events trigger other events to happen. We're going to look for and use words like therefore, the reason, this led to, best reason, because or because of, since, as a result of, so that if. If, if it rains, then I will get very wet on account of. So you might ask yourself, because this happened, what might result or what did result? What caused the character or the person or the people to behave that way or act that way? If we changed an event, what would happen? Because of something happening, which of the following will happen? So we want to be stopping and asking ourselves, because of this, what's happening now? So as we read, we're going to look for something that happened in the text. We'll think about how it happened, what made it happen, or the reason it happened. That's the cause. Then we'll think about what happened next. We'll identify the result. That's the effect. So let's practice doing that. We're going to read this story or this informational text. It's a historical text about someone named Mary Anderson. Mary Anderson's Great Adventure. You have this text in your reading writing workshop book, page 70, and I've also uploaded it to the folder for you. You can read along with me on the computer screen right now. You might think that a ride in a bus or a car is the same today as it was long ago. That isn't true. The first cars were not as fast. They were noisy. Cars didn't even have windshield wipers. When it rained, drivers rubbed their windshields with an onion. The oil from the onion would repel or keep off rain and sleet. It wasn't the best solution, but there were no better substitutes. Nothing else worked. Then a woman named Mary Anderson solved the problem. It started with snow. Take a look at some of the text features on this page. So I see illustrations. I see headings. I see a diagram over here that's labeled. And I also see some key words. So it's important that we're paying attention to these text features because they give us extra information. So I can pretty much guess that this section is going to tell me that this whole thing started with some snow. 
Mary Anderson grew up in Alabama. In the winter of 1902, she went to New York City. It was a cold and windy day. The sky was a gray curtain. Snow was a white blanket on the ground. Mary was cold and wet. Because she wanted to warm up and get dry, she rode a streetcar. So why did she ride a streetcar? Because she wanted to warm up and get dry. So the cause of her riding the car, the streetcar, was because she was cold and wet, she wanted to warm up and get dry. Back then, some streetcar windshields had two parts. They opened with a push. From her seat, Mary watched snow and ice build up on the windshield. The streetcar driver could not see, so he pushed open the windshield. So what did he do because he could not see? You probably said he pushed open the windshield. This helped him to see better. As a result, snow and ice blew in his face. Soon his nose and ears were ice cubes. So, snow and ice is building up on the windshield. He can't see. Because of that, he pushed open the windshield. So, the cause is he can't see. The effect, he pushed open the windshield. Now, he pushed open the windshield because he did that. Snow and ice blew in his face. What caused that? Well, he had to open the windshield. And if you're trying to picture that in your head, it's kind of difficult if you've never seen a streetcar. So it's important that we look at the picture and we can see him right here with the window open and he's having to hang out the window to see because of all the snow and ice on the windows. Other cars kept stopping too. Sometimes the drivers hopped out. They wiped off their windshields. Then they got back in and drove. As a result, traffic moved slowly. So I want you to identify why is traffic moving slowly? Because drivers had to stop. Cars kept stopping. They had to get out and clean their windshield. And we also have these key words for cause and effect. It's as a result. So the car stopped and as a result, traffic was moving slowly. I see this heading up here. It's called the next step. So what do you think this section is going to be about? probably about what happened next, right? Mary thought about this problem. How could drivers clean their windshields without stopping? Could they do it without opening their windshield? Back home in Alabama, Mary sketched her idea. Then she added notes. She wanted to examine her solution to make sure that it worked. Next, Mary did her own investigation. She looked for facts about what drivers needed. She invented a windshield wiper that a driver could use from inside the car. Then she worked out a design or plan. On paper, Mary's invention looked simple. She hoped drivers would find it easy to use. So this section tells all about Mary's reaction to this problem. I see a diagram down here. So if you haven't seen a windshield wiper work before, you would know what it looks like. Um, this is the wiper, this is the window, and it says the first windshield wiper was moved by a handle inside the car. So the handle inside is making the wiper clean the snow and rain and sleet off the window. Mary had a model built. It was made of quality wood, rubber, and metal. Soon the model was ready to test. It was fitted on a windshield. The driver moved a handle inside the car. 
The handle caused a blade to move back and forth across the glass. It worked. Mary's idea was a gem. She felt encouraged and was sure it would sell. So why? Oh. So what's causing the blade to move back and forth across the glass? Well, the driver's inside and he has to move a handle inside the car to make it work. Solving the problem. Mary's windshield wipers solved a problem, but it took many years before people used them. That's because most people did not own cars. So what is the cause of people not using them? Why would it be many years before people used them? And you got it. Because most people didn't even have cars. By 1913, more people bought and drove cars. Those cars had windshields. Finally, windshield wipers began to sell. Driving became safer and easier because of Mary Anderson's idea. So, why did driving become safer and easier? Because of, and there's our signal words, Mary Anderson's idea. We've got a little extra piece of information here. It's not part of the text, but it's more information about the topic. Cars from long ago were different from cars we ride in today. Here are some more inventions that helped make driving safer. So we know that we had the windshield wiper. We also had the first seat belts were used in 1885. Cars stopped at the first stop sign in 1915. Can you imagine there not being stop signs on the road? Cars first used turn signals in 1938. Okay, you're going to be answering a discussion question today involving this text. I want you to think about cause and effect and your cause and effect words. You can answer your discussion question through a video, through a voice recording, or through typing. It's up to you. So be thinking about cause and effect and you're going to answer your discussion question now.